and we're on time. Uh, we're moving on to the last section of our questions, which is we've called the State of the Union, and it starts with the Chairman of the Scottish Affairs <coughs> Committee, Pete Wishart. Thank you, Alexis, to you here. And I think this committee's disappointed we didn't get the opportunity to maybe hear from your predecessor, such was the pace of events over the course of the past few months. It's now been uh, four weeks since uh, the Supreme Court made its decision that the Scottish Parliament didn't have the necessary powers to legislate for a Scottish independence referendum. What happens now? Well, as I think we respect the decision of the Supreme Court and we'll continue to focus on delivering for the people of Scotland and working constructively with the Scottish Government to do that. Well, what has happened, of course, is that there's now six opinion polls in a row that shows majority support for Scottish independence. And if there was an independence referendum tomorrow, I think there'd be a very good chance that Scottish independence would win. So, again, I ask you, how do we take this forward? How do we start to resolve the situation? I don't think you're expecting that those of us who support Scottish independence should take our ambitions for our nations away. So what is the UK government going to do to respond to this issue? If this session is called State of the Union, it's certainly in a state when one part of it seems to want the option of leaving this union. Well, I, 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 I'm going to continue delivering for the people of Scotland. I think we've, we've talked about all the issues that the country is grappling with, whether it's inflation, the cost of living, yeah, more than anything else, but also making sure that we can uh, have health services that are responsive to people's needs, protecting our energy security, standing up to Russian aggression. You know, these are all really important issues, and I think on you know, many of them we can and will continue to work constructively with the Scottish Government to make a difference to, to people's lives. And that, that's very much my focus, and, and that's what I'll continue to do. Do you realise just how hollow and woeful that response sounds to the situation in Scotland as well. I mean, we want to resolve this democratically. We believe the Scottish people should decide their future. I think that's how most nations would approach this issue. Even the Labour Party have their own new constitutional plans that they're bringing forward. I think the Liberals still believe in federalism across the UK. You're not going to sit there and tell me you have no plans to deal with some of the constitutional difficulties issues that there is in Scotland just now. Surely you must have some sort of plan other than all the other things that you're going to be doing anyway. Well, actually, I, I mean, one thing that we're very keen to make sure we deliver is um, all the recommendations of the Smith Commission, which represented a significant transfer of power and responsibility to the Scottish Government, which is probably the most powerful devolved uh, parliament anywhere in the world. Uh, the Scotland Act 2016 set out all of those, and we want to work constructively with the Scottish Government to deliver on all of those as we are making good progress on and that <coughs> represents, as I said, one of the biggest transfers of power that anyone has ever seen um, and that's, that, that's the UK Government respecting uh, the commitments that it made and delivering on them. See, so we've all been asking you this from you all the way down to your senior ministers to the Secretary of State from Scotland. We've all asked, what do we do now? How do we actually move this forward? How do we start to accommodate the legitimate requirements of the Scottish people when it comes to deciding this constitutional future? We've not had any answer, and again, we're not getting any answer at all. The only thing we've had, I think, is from the Secretary of State from Scotland, who said, we'll just know when we get there, when the conditions will be right. And they gave the famous duck test. If it looks like a duck, was like a duck, you know the rest of it, Prime Minister. Is that what it is? Is that, is that, is that what we've got to wait for till you decide that the conditions are right for the Scottish people to have this opportunity to decide the constitutional future? No, I, I, look, my, my belief is that the Scottish people would like their governments, both the Scottish government and the UK government, to focus on the issues that are most pressing at the moment, given the scale of the challenges that we face. You know, I've been very clear that I want to do that in a constructive manner. I want to work in partnership where the Scot with the Scottish Government where we can, and I think we can, make a difference to people's lives. Uh, that's why I called the First Minister very shortly after assuming office. It's why uh, I attended the British Irish Council that brings together everyone from across our islands uh, in one place to discuss these issues. And you know, I will continue to operate in that spirit uh, and hopefully make a difference on these issues that matter to people at this time. So here's something else we'll offer you and see if you could agree with this or not. That the more you prevaricate on this, the more you sort of say no, your failure to engage into the legitimate demands of the Scottish people, the only thing that's going to happen surely is support for independence is going to continue to grow up and at some point you're going to have to sit down and deal with that. Why don't you just deal with that just now? Why don't you bring forward the necessary change in the legislation so we, we could do this? Because the, the other option surely is support for independence is going to go up and at some point you're going to have to address this. 
You do realise that, don't you? Well, I th- what, what, what I'm focused on is actually making a difference to the lives of people in Scotland. I think uh, the challenges they face, first and foremost, are with the cost of living and the impact that's having on them. You know, I want to do everything I can to try and alleviate some of those burdens and provide opportunity and jobs for them. And I think we can do a lot of that in partnership with the <laughs> Scottish Government when we work constructively together, and that's what I'm going to keep doing. And, and I think that's the right thing to do. Well, I think the Scottish people will be listening to these proceedings and will be very disappointed that you can't even offer one scenario where you're going to engage positively with what the Scottish people seem to want. But just lastly from me, Sir Bernard, if that's all right, like, um, you're the only senior government minister that was given a fixed penalty notice during Partygate. The, the other recipient of one, of course, is facing the Privileges Committee with some very serious <coughs> sanctions. Do you think that we've been unnecessarily hard on your predecessor, but one, or maybe too lenient, lenient on yourself? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've addressed that in the past, so I haven't got anything further to add, and I wouldn't, wouldn't be my place to comment on the Privileges Committee, which is obviously independent from government. But I would just say... You, disagree with something you said before about what the Scottish people will see about engaging positively. That's exactly what we are doing. Uh, we are engaging positively with the Scottish Government. That's why I called the First Minister shortly after taking office, indeed on the first day. It's why I went to, to see her and other devolved leaders very shortly after taking office, the first UK Prime Minister to attend that gathering since 2007. Uh, I think that serves as a demonstration that I do want to engage positively to make a difference I to the lives of people in, in Scotland. I could tell you I'm happy about that. Uh, because I think that's, the, I think that's the right, the right I thing. Sense, I think, and I'm going to keep doing that. And, and actually, and actually you know, just, just recently, and when, when I was Chancellor, we made sure that we can invest directly in Scottish communities through the Leveling Up Fund. That, that, those investments are making a real difference on the ground for those communities, and I think that's an example of what we can do, and I'm going to keep doing more of it. I'd just like to point out that the references to the Privileges Committee have nothing to do with fixed penalty notices. They're about a completely separate matter. Um, as a member of the Privileges Committee, I think I'm entitled to say that. <laughs>